In this video, I'm going to teach you the IELTS writing tax too. The motivation behind this video is that I've had a lot of people reaching out to me to make a video about this. And um, I believe that most people want to know the tricks and techniques I used. Um, that got me the required band score and that made the writing tax so easy for me. So in this video, I'm going to show you the how. I'm going to show you the tricks and strategies. So if you are interested, come with me. Welcome back. If you are new on this channel, I really appreciate you. And if you are a returning subscriber, I mean, it's because of you that I'm always motivated to make videos. I just want to show you the ways that did help me as I got in the first attempt, okay? So once you are here, I promise you that I'm going to give you the best of information you need to easily have the IELTS writing tax too at your fingertips, okay? Alright, so to understand the IELTS writing tax too to perfection, there are some basic things you need to know, okay? Now, most people go into IELTS without having any basic knowledge about, I mean, what this subject entails, okay? So, what I'll do is that um, before I zoom into the writing tax too, um, I'll let you know the basics, I mean, with regards to the writing tax. The IELTS writing test, it consists of two main tasks. You have the tax 1 and the tax 2, okay? Now, you are supposed to use 60 minutes um, for these two tasks. So 20 minutes allocated to the tax one, and then the remaining 40 minutes should be allocated to the tax two. Mostly people do have difficulties managing the time when it comes to the writing test. But I think that by the end of this video, I will show you one or two ways to basically, I mean, work within the time so that you can have enough time to read over your work. You know, the reason why most people fail the IELTS writing test or possibly have a lower band score is because um, they are unable to read through their essays after they've written the 250 words or however they've written on the paper, okay? So, um, to be able to work within the specified time, I've got a trick to show you in this video. So, what I entreat you to do is to just watch till the end. Alright. So you should understand that um, to pass your writing test, there are two things involved. You should be able to have the required bound score for the tax 1 and the tax 2 because they strike the average to give you the bound score. So should you get, let's say, band 7 in tax 1 and then band 6.5 in tax 2, they will have to take the average of this, um, these two bound scores and give you the total bound score for the writing test. Okay, so you have to give equal attention to all of them. You shouldn't say, um, you have interest in the writing that one. I mean, the writing that one is quite easy, so you do focus more on that aspect than the uh, writing that two. You should give equal attention to all. But most people do advise that um, it's better you start with the writing that two because that is where there's most marks, okay? But above all, each one of them is important, okay? So, with the writing that two, you need to write 250 ways as against the writing that one, which is 150 ways. So, you take note of that. And in the course of this video, I'll be showing you the format. I mean, you see, the format for the writing tax 2 is quite different from the writing tax 1. So, I'll show you the format as well. And if you also expect some tricks and techniques, all right, and also expose you to the various types of questions you will be answering or you are likely to meet in your IELTS writing tax 2. I think it's one of the ways, I mean, it's one of the easiest ways to basically have a firm grip of the writing tax 2. Okay. Most people who sit for the IELTS at the point do not even know the questions they are going to um, encounter and that is, to me, it's one of the ways you are likely to fail. And uh, lest I forget, I also show you how to determine um, the number of words you have written. There's a strategy to go about it, so you don't have to count the individual words because there's no time. I mean, you only have 40 minutes to deal with the tax too. And the question to ask to whether you've written 250 words or less um, is another subject for the day. Because if you should write something less than 250 words, then it means that you have not met the required, I mean, target or the, ta the, the, the tax achievement has not been met. Okay. So I'll also highlight some of the criteria, I mean, what the examiners are expecting from you. Because if you're able to give them what they want, then they will give you the band score you desire. Alright, so let me just tend to the um, board and let's see how it goes 
to to basically understand the IELTS writing tax too there are some things i believe we should um, just have a fair idea of before we even start practicing okay and i call that the overview so as you can see on the screen um the writing tax too is designed to test your ability to write an academic style essay all right you must present the information in your own ways as complete sentences within paragraphs and you are required to write 50 ways as i said and with these 50 ways you only have 40 minutes to do that so um generally the writing task one should cover one hour which is equal to 60 minutes 20 minutes for the tax one and then 40 minutes for the tax two and i should tell you the amount of effort you have to put into the writing tax two okay so what i used to do was that um, in my practice i tried to use 15 minutes for the tax one and I channel the remaining five minutes to the tax too, just to make sure that I have a more concerned and enticing essay to probably place the examiner to give me the um, band score I want. Okay, so you don't have to probably be worried about that. So now that you know the overview of the tax too, um, there are some topics you should be familiar with. So as I said, you see. I don't think um, this is your first time writing an essay. You've written essays in your junior high schools, you've written essays in your um, SHS and then tertiary as well. So, um, writing of an academic essay is nothing new. Just that IELTS is a little bit structured and it should try as much as possible to follow up I mean, the format. Once you get the format, um, the knowledge you have about writing academic essays and I mean, other things um, still applies, okay? so i think it's nothing to fear i mean you don't have to worry you don't have to be so nervous about the writing task too it's just a matter of understanding the format and then a little touches and you are good to go all right so i believe that to pass the IELTS writing task too you should know the type of questions i mean sorry the type of topics you are likely to have assist on so mostly they set questions on topics that have to do with education crime media technology social issues agriculture i mean advertisement so these are some basic topics we are all familiar with okay and um once they come because we are familiar with them because we are used to them because we listen to, i mean you listen to the radio you've once been in the classroom and it's about education if once hear stories about crime if once i mean listen to music watch i mean movies i mean so all these things are familiar to us that's why I said that um, IELTS writing task too has to do with you getting to know the format. I mean, what the examiner expects from you, and you add a little knowledge you have about the topic to it. That is all. So the topics that are likely to come are those that I've mentioned to you. So if there's any of them you have no idea about, then you should try as much as possible to read about them. So let's say if you are not a fan of music, you may have little wish or little knowledge about music. So what this means is that if you have a question on music, um, you find it very difficult to express yourself or use the right way or the right vocabulary to um, probably maneuver your way. So the best thing is to just read on that. Um, for me, what I did was um, when I began practice, I realized that there were some of the topics I wasn't that familiar with. I mean, I know education, I know about agriculture, and there are some terms I can use when it comes to writing the essay. But there were some like. Um, the crime, technology, and the others. I had to find time, read about technological uh, issues, read about, I mean, um, criminal issues, and some of them, just note some of the words they usually use to express themselves when it comes to talking about criminal issues, okay? So, this is what you must know because once you get to know the topics that are likely to come or that you are likely to meet in the IELTS writing that too. You get to focus on where you think you have, you have less ways to express yourself and that is the reason why you must know the, the type of topics the questions are set on or the questions are centered on okay all right so once you know the topics um you just have to also know the type of questions you are likely to have mm, okay so basically when you consider the IELTS writing tax too there are some question types you are likely to meet just like the writing tax one okay we have the diagrams we have um processes i mean the same thing applies here you've got different question types you are likely to encounter 
and my advice is that before you get to the examination center you should have practiced all these question types because if not then you will be found one thing you may not and one thing about the IELTS is that you can't predict what question is coming okay so that is why in your practice you should try as much as possible to familiarize yourself with any question type so that once you get to the examination room and you get to see that question I mean you find a feel of it you've tried it before and the nervousness or the fear of feeling um, becomes minimal so that is one thing I would let you know all right so we are going to look at some of the question types you are possibly going to meet in the um, IELTS writing task too okay so considering the IELTS writing task too there are some basic basic questions you must get to know and the first one has to do with the opinion issues here what happens is that you'll be given a question and you will be asked to share your opinion uh, you ask you whether you agree or disagree with it okay you have a way of going about this type of issue and i'm not going to promise you that i can give you every trick or everything you need to know or you have to do when you get this type of issue but if i should do that then this video is going to take about um, three or four hours which i don't think you have time to probably watch okay so what i'll do is i'm going to i'll put them in separate videos just to um enlighten you about them and if possible i'll show you the tricks and strategies i used to um, actually make them easy for me all right so as i said in the opinion is where well, you'll be asked to share your i mean opinion about a topic i mean and they'll probably ask you as to whether you agree or disagree with that apart from that i um, also have another opinion essay which has to do with um which one of the the other which one has more advantages than the other so um, I will expose you to them in the course of this video and we also have what we call the um, two-way questions here you'll be asked a question although probably through a scenario at you and ask two questions in relation to um, the topic they've given you and you are supposed to write the essay to answer those two questions and we have cause and effect Basically, I remember way back in junior high school, we used to write for my issues to probably ministers and uh, other dignitaries expressing our concern about societal problems. And, and then one of those essays I used to remember was about sanitary conditions, okay, I mean sanitation issues. So with the cause and effect, we are looking at the cause of something and the effect it has on the individual or a group of people. So it's not that a difficult essay you should worry about. You just look at that. We also have what we call the um, discussion essays. They give a topic and uh, you are supposed to, I mean, discuss both sides. And at the end of the day, it's either you just have to let, I mean, those sides remain equal or you select a side, okay? So we look at them in here. So these are basically some of the questions you are likely to meet. And each one of them has a way of probably going about it but the truth of the matter and the happy thing is that the format is the same okay so now let's look at something here now when you have a writing task two question um the instruction will go like you should spend 40 minutes on the tax as i earlier mentioned you only have 40 minutes to finish up the tax and there is no extra time or there is no any other thing like um i please i will give me more time to finish up no there's nothing like that once the time is due your paper is collected okay so now let's look at some a sample question of the writing that too so some people believe that the fast pace and stretch of modern life is having a negative effect on families to what extent do you agree or disagree so this is an opinion issue so usually um the probably the scenario of the higher writing tax too we we'll have two things in place okay we we'll have the topic and the question all right so when you look at this some people believe that the fast pace and stress of modern life is having a negative effect on families so the topic has to do with fast pace and stressful life i mean situations of life that is the topic and the question here is what extent do you agree or disagree so in all the questions that i talk about you have a topic and you have a question or questions that is why i said that you should be able to familiarize yourself with the topics so once the topic is seen you should be able to determine whether it's about culture whether it's about education whether it's about whether it's about music whether it's about technology i mean 
knowing this will help you know the right words to use that is very very important okay so um, without knowing once the i mean once you have the topic and the question um the instructions will go like give reasons for your answer and include any relevant examples from your own knowledge or experience so i'll show you a simple technique and i'm not sure that will be possible in this video but if it is then so be it i'll show you a simple technique to go about this it's very very important all right and you have to write at least 250 words take note of that instruction write at least what this means is that you can write more than 250 words but not less than 250 words and that is something you must take notice of so i believe that you have had a fair knowledge about the IELTS writing task you know you need um 40 minutes to finish up this task and i've exposed you some of the topics you are likely to meet and also the question types you just have to familiarize yourself with before the exams day all right so um what i'm going to do is that i'm going to show you the format to writing the IELTS writing task too if you have watched my previous video with regards to the tax one i showed you a concrete format and i said that if there's anything about ielts it has to do with planning okay so in that video i said um you should have about three to five minutes of your time planning your essay and the planning has to do with you drawing up the format to know what comes first what comes after and then what comes last and what you are writing at each particular point in time okay so um to know the format of the writing task two um it's quite different from the task one as i don't mentioned so um here you have to write your introduction and the introduction comes in two forms i would have a demonstration of that on the board for you to see i don't think um it's now i'll do it at a later time or after this video and you get that to watch by today's video, I'm just giving the general overview of what happens in the IELTS writing tax too. Alright, so you need your introduction and the introduction should contain what we call the background statement and the thesis statement. I'm not going to dive much into details here. I'll let you know later on. And once you have your introduction, you have to write your body. Now your body should be structured into paragraphs, okay? You have paragraph 1, paragraph 2, and if possible, paragraph 3. Depending on the points you have, depending on the number of questions you are asked in there. So if um, there is a topic and um, two related questions, then it means that you are having two bodies because each body should answer one question. That is the general idea. You don't have to worry. I mean, I will have time to expose you to all this. Okay. So, um... The point I want to let you know is that you see your body should be structured into paragraphs. So depending on the points you have, you have to keep each one of them in a separate paragraph. And for my previous um, video, if you have followed that, you could realize that I said every paragraph should have one idea, and that is part of organization. Okay. So right after this, I will show you the what the examiner expects from you or the criteria for marking the IELTS tags too. All right. So now once you're body paragraphs are well settled then you are moving on to your conclusion okay so your conclusion possibly is a summary of whatever you said in the paragraph one and two okay you just have to summarize everything but in different ways okay so basically that is um is it about the format so you need your introduction you need your body paragraphs depending on how many you want to write but ideally your general issue should cover about five Four to five paragraphs okay i'm writing six paragraphs is too much and you don't have enough time for that okay that's great so um this is the format and i believe that getting to know the format is part of the planning okay and um, because you have 40 minutes for the writing tax too what i advise is that just spend about five minutes to plan your essay okay so draw up this format and um try to figure out what information you are putting under each format and you know your introduction should cover one paragraph your body paragraph one body paragraph two and your conclusion should cover another paragraph and in IELTS, i've said in my previous video that the best paragraph you can leave is a line 
So after I write your introduction, you leave one full line and it moves your body paragraph one. After writing the body paragraph one, you leave one full line, you move to the body paragraph two. After that, you leave one full line and then you go to the conclusion. So this is how it should be structured. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to show you the grading of tax two. What are the examiners looking for? Okay. Uh, what are they expecting from you? So once you give them that, then they also give you the band score you require. And you know, um, let me put this across. You are individual people, I don't know the band score you require or you are yearning for in the writing tax too. It might be 6.5, it might be 6, it might be um, 7, it might be 9, it might be um, 8. But I'm um, rest assured that you can't get band 9 in um, writing tax because even native speakers are not getting band 9. So you just have to take note of that. So your target should be probably, uh, depending on the country or what you want to use the results for, should probably um, target 6.5 to basically 8 or 7.5. Yeah. But if you should get 8.5, then, I mean, so be it. It's still possible. Okay. It's a matter of, I mean, um, doing what the examiners require. It's a matter of doing what the examiners expect from you. And, I mean, they will give you what you deserve. Okay, so the first criteria they are looking for is what we call a tax response. So what is tax response? Here, um, they want to know whether you focused on the topic. So if the question is um, talking about, sorry, if the topic is about music, um, have you actually focused on that? Or is talking about something else? Is you actually giving an answer to the question that has been asked? So that tax response, did you respond to the task? Do you agree or disagree? If that is the question, I mean, did you respond to that task? If you did, then basically um, you are getting the required band score for that particular area. Okay? If you did, then it means that that criteria has been met. So, there, what they expect from you is that they want you to write 250 words, the tax response, because you can remember that in the question, they said you have to write 250 words. You have to write 250 words. Okay? So 250 words and it's part of the tax response. It's your essay out to 250 words or less. If it's less than, then it means that you are losing out. If it's less than, then it means that you are losing out on the mark. And uh, you also have to cover all topics. As I said, tax response, you must cover all topics. You have to develop your main point and cover all parts of the question. When you have been able to do this, then it means that your tax response is perfectly um, top notched and that you have met the criteria for I mean getting whatever band score that is using you okay so now once you are true with your tax response we look at your coherence and cohesion so um, with this one we are looking at how you structure your essay the paragraph and I've talked about that leaving the line the paragraph and how you connect your ideas all together will give you the coherence and the um, cohesion okay so um are your ideas logical do they link up i mean how is your paragraph like um is it well structured or you clump them together is there any repetition of words or information so they look out for all this and basically if you fall within the trap then i want to have a lower band score for that criteria so you have to take note of that and the next criteria has to do with physical ratios. So here they are looking at your vocabulary. And when I say the vocabulary, it's not those big, big words, but they are the words that relate to the topic. So for example, if it's about education, your essay is about education, you're supposed to talk about a topic that has to do with education. You should be able to use the right vocabulary or the right terminologies. I, mean, I think that's the right way. So in education, you can get a word like primary school. I mean, it's a key word. Secondary school, educational policies, syllables. I mean, cardboard, books, booklet, pamphlet. Those are terminologies you can use when it comes to topics that pertain to education. So with the lexical research, they will find out have you been able to use those words? Have you been able to use the right way to describe the topic on board? So if it's about technology, have you been able to use the right way to express yourself? If it's about agriculture, if it's about health, have you had the right way to express yourself? So we know in health, there are some basic things you can't do without, like ingestion, um, like um, healthcare, like hospital, 
I mean, are you able to use those words? So those are what they are looking for, alright? So once you are able to use them, then you are good to go. And besides that, they also be looking at what you call collocation. You see, there are some words that go together. For example, um, in front of, in front of. So in front goes to the word of. According to infested with a bunch of bananas. I mean, so all these are some of the collocations. I mean, words that go together. So once you're able to use them in your issue, then you are meeting up the criteria of physical rituals. And also your spellings as well is very very important. Once you have spelling mistakes, then it will go against you in the physical ratios. And grammatical range and accuracy. Are you able to structure your sentences in a grammatically correct way? Your subject verb agreement, your tenses, I mean are they on point? They look at all this, okay? So um, these are basically the criteria they look for. There are about four of them they look for to give you the required bound score you need. So if you're able to meet all these requirements, then you should be rest assured that you are getting the required bound score you are aiming for. I believe that I've given you enough information about the writing task one for now. I think let's call this session the part one, okay? And uh, I'm coming up with the part two to in the part two, we dive into the individual question types and see how they are written. Okay, so thank you very much for having time to watch this video. Uh, what I want to assure you is that I'm here to give you the best of information to help you pass IELTS in the first attempt. I know how it feels to feel IELTS. I know um, the amount of money, the effort you have to put in to make things work. So if you fail in the first attempt, probably I mean it's quite disheartening and I don't want that. That is why I devoted myself to sharing my experience, whatever I know about IELTS to help you um, maneuver your way to pass in the first attempt. You wouldn't know how happy it is to pass IELTS in the first attempt until you have passed. So just stay tuned. If you have not subscribed to this channel, hit the subscribe button and what this means is that you get more of my videos to watch, okay? I also share videos just to motivate you to probably zoom into action. I mean start with the IELTS, alright? So just stay tuned, thank you very much, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Also make sure you share this video and you give me a thumbs up, I mean a like, alright?